All right, so the winner of the 50K keyboard giveaway is going to be announced at the end of the video because right now this video is mostly about the Unix commands I use at work and it's not going to take too long. I just thought it would be a fun little thing to share with y'all. And these commands aren't every single command I've ever used at work. These are commands that I use frequently at work. Maybe that's every single day, multiple times a day. Maybe that's every week, every other week, but anything within like twice a month that I've been using for the past few months is going to be on this list. So Let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so here I have a uh, little terminal window brought up for y'all just to kind of give you a little bit of an example of what I'll be talking about in this video. And let's get this out of the way. And what you'll see is that many of these are fairly common. That's why I kind of want to make this video because you're not necessarily doing a lot of crazy commands all the time, maybe once a month or once every other month. But for the most part, I start off with uh, doing a CD, which stands for change directory, actually. I need to see what's in this directory, so I'll do an ls that lists everything in the directory. So if I want to go over to the Forest Knight YouTube directory, if I change direct, oh, change directory over to Forest Knight, and then I hit tab, that'll finish off the directory name that I just started. And now, as you can see, I'm in the next directory. There are a few little nuances to this. So since you can already see that I'm in a particular directory, if I go ahead and hit cd and I hit dot dot, it'll take me back one directory and you hit the up arrow, you can go back through your history of commands. And then let's go on over back to this and something else you'll see. Is there anything else in here? Let me hop on into E2E. Let's see what else is in here. So let's just go into source. And this is all serving a particular purpose. So as you can see right here, I'm in a Forest Knight YouTube directory, which this is like a little mock thing that I made for a video that y'all didn't see. And then within that directory, you'll find the E2E. And then within that directory, you'll see the source. And then that's the directory that we're currently in. So like I just said, if you go ahead and do CD dot dot, hit enter, you go back a directory. However, let's go back into there. If you do CD and then you do this little, uh, what is it called, a tilde or squiggly, whatever the heck it's called, it'll take you all the way back to your home directory. So I use those a lot. And if I were to come in here and I said, oh, well, I don't have a directory to go into. Well, I, I should probably make a directory. So make directory, MKDIR, that stands for make directory, and I'll just title it whatever I want, whatever I want. And now if we ls and list whatever's going on in there, you can see we have the whatever I want directory on in there. And then if I Actually, I was just making that for an example. So let's go ahead and remove directory, rmdir, whatever I want. And now we can come on in, check this out. Whatever I want directory is no longer there. Now, these are some basic commands. I understand that, but I but I use them. I ain't trying to be fancy here. There's a reason that these are some of the first commands that they teach is because, well, in my case, they're what I use the most. So what do I want to do? I want to get all that out of the way. So I use clear. I like to do that to get all that mess out of the way. And then, you know, I came up through here and I'm searching through. All right, well, I wanted to go to the to this other command that I have, but I can't exactly find it. What would I do then? I'll go over and just type in history and then I'm able to see all my historical commands. Now, what I have on the list next is git. So git, I don't just use git. That's not exactly something that works just right. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and install git. I don't think I typed in the right password. And that's something else good to note is that if you notice that I just typed in git, I didn't have git installed, so it wasn't able to recognize any of my git commands. And you can just do that and it'll tell you it can be installed with sudo apt install git. Sudo is essentially I am the administrator of this computer, so do whatever I say. Apt is what will install git. Let's clear that on out of the way, and git is what I was getting at. That, that was unintentional. But what I do with git is I will git pull from my particular repository after I do a git remote and I'm hooked up to a remote repository. Or alternatively to git pull, this is what git pull would look like, I would do a git fetch, and then I'll do a git merge. So here's merge right here. I'll leave a list of all of the commands that I've mentioned down in the description below in case you want to check that out and see exactly what I'm talking about. Basically what git fetch, git merge does is git pull, just in a different way. And then of course I'll come on over and do a git push, but before I push it, I want to make sure I come over and do a git branch because I want to make sure I'm in the proper like development branch or what have you. Obviously this is a, I'm not connected to anything on there. And then what else do I do? 
So once I understand that I'm on the development branch because I don't want to be pushing to the head branch so it just pushes into production, I want to make sure that I'm pushing to a development branch because that way the development branch will then be tested and then be put through QA and then will be go over to production once it is done and ready. And done and ready, that's generally done and ready at the end of a sprint or whatever. You know, if you see a version update with like 3.4, 3.5, 4.0, those are what get pushed to production. You want to make sure you test it, you do quality assurance on it, and then you go on and throw it over in production in a particular patch update or a big update like 4.0. And then to make sure that I am all in line with whatever I got going on, I'll throw up a get status. And that'll compare my current branch with the remote branch to see where we defer. Do I need to commit anything? Am I up to date with the actual branch? Am I ahead of the actual remote branch? So that's what get status does. It tells you your status. Most of this is self-explanatory and I apologize that I'm not in an actual repository to show you what it'll actually show. I'm just trying to give you the actual commands and then you can do some research and use them on your own. You're never, well maybe I shouldn't say never, but the way I learn is actually by doing and doing multiple times. I can listen to someone say something and maybe I'll pick it up, but once I actually do it, I'll remember it a lot easier than just listening to somebody say something about it. So take that how you will. And also to finish off Git, what I'll also do is Git stash and that'll stash my merges, my merges? Well, not necessarily merges, but how do I want to word this? So basically, this is when I use git stash. When I have changes on top of what I thought was consistent with the remote repository. So let me take this step back. I have my project, someone pushed up changes to the remote repository. I pulled those changes into my local repository. I added my changes, you know, wrote some code, what have you, and now I'm ready to push back up to the remote repository. Sometimes I will stage it, I will commit it, and then when I go to push it, I realize that someone else had already pushed to the repository. I forget sometimes. I, what I really like to do is pull before I stage and commit and try to push, but it doesn't work that way all the time. So once I've already staged and committed, and I try to push, but the remote repository is not consistent with what mine is prior to the commits, I will git stash my changes. So basically I have what I did before I made those changes that are located, that are in the commit. And what that'll allow me to do is pull in the changes from the remote repository into my current directory. While that is now updated in its own little shell, I still have some of these changes that I personally made over here. And I'll do a git stash pop and that'll throw what I have right back in, and now I'm essentially happily merged all together. Sometimes there are little nuancey things that you have to do, but it's not that difficult. Or I don't use any of those git commands and I just use VS Code or Eclipse to do my git work for me, but uh, that's neither here nor there. I promise it wasn't a waste of time. So how about let's hop on into the Gradle build. So in order to build my Gradle project, I'll type in dot slash Gradle W, which is Gradle wrapper. I will type in build, I'll hit enter, and then it'll build my Gradle file, make sure everything is working properly. I always do that before I push up my code so I don't break the code base up there because I've done that before but uh something else I will sometimes do is is the same thing but I'll clean it but one thing I use the most is I come on and I go ahead and do boot run dash pdev and that command right there boots and runs my project within whatever directory I may be located in basically the way I do it is I have three terminal tabs open in a particular window I will have one for the back end and I will do the same thing I'll have one for the front end I'll do the same thing and then another one one for the front end and I'll do npm start uh, start can I type and that will allow me to make changes and see it refresh in the browser as I make the changes it's real convenient so you don't have to rerun everything every single time now sometimes when I go ahead and try to hit boot run one I will realize that I've had this terminal window open too long and I have to close out of it reopen it and then redo this particular that command right there, the boot run, and then it'll work. I don't know why, but I found a solution, so I'm not really asking any questions. However, something else that happens on occasion are my ports are filled with my current runs, which I don't understand why, you know, sometimes I'll come in and I do my boot run, I'll come over and do control Z while it's running and that's supposed to kill it, and it does kill it, but it supposedly sometimes maybe won't kill it on the port. So when I notice that, what I'll do is I'll come over and I'll hit LSOF, I TCP, 
and I'll type in whatever port I have. So 3000, I'll check the 3000, see if anything's there, nothing's there. I'll check 4000, see if anything's there, nothing's there. I'll check 8080, see if anything's there, nothing's there. So this was a really bad example. So I have nothing running on any of my ports, any of those three ports. But then what will generally happen is it'll tell me my particular ID, what is running, listening on that port. And I will come in and I'll do kill nine, Whatever that ID is, it'll generally be four or five numbers long. So 27361 could be one. Hit enter, and then it'll kill that process. And that's basically all I use. Sometimes I'll use netstat, but not often enough to include it on this list. But I guess I kind of just did, didn't I? And I know I ran through it just quickly, and I did that intentionally because I don't want to say, oh, you look at this command, I use this command, and I use this command, simply because they're just commands. They're just there to do your bidding. They're not that complex. They're very common, most of them, especially for whatever project you're using, and that's what I do. It also feels really cool when you can come on in here and just type in whatever commands, and you can just navigate to wherever you want within your computer. You feel like a real hacker there. But now it's time to announce the giveaway winner, so I'm going to go give it back to Future Forest because I've actually already announced the winner. All right, so the winner of the 50K keyboard giveaway is... Christopher Lesniak. Good job, man. So you just won a new Logitech keyboard. Not sponsored, by the way. Maybe maybe one day. By the time this video is live, I will have sent you an email, so be sure to check that. I don't believe I ever go in anyone's spam folder, but if you do not see an email from me, Christopher, be sure to check your spam folder and uh, get back to me so we can get the ball rolling and I can send you this wonderful keyboard. For all of y'all who did not win, that's okay. I've never won any of these either. So to be honest with you, Christopher's already won ahead of me. Now this, I hope, isn't the last giveaway on my channel. The next time I would like to hold it with a company. So one of two things will happen. Instead of just, you know, me going to the store and picking up a keyboard to give away to y'all, just to show my gratitude, I'll be able to team up with a particular company and we can give away a bigger present than a keyboard, or we'll be able to give away multiple presents. I don't know if present is the right word. Let's just say we'll have multiple winners to give away multiple items. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like. Even if you didn't win, please. I, this wasn't about having one winner and having everyone else be a loser. What all of this was about was just to try to show my gratitude to y'all for supporting me on the channel and everything. That's just, that's what this giveaway was all about. And that's what all of the giveaways in the future will be all about. So please, how about this? If you want to see another giveaway in the future, give this video a big thumbs up. You can't say no to that one. And subscribe if you're new around here. I make videos regarding software engineering and computer science. So if you liked this video, imagine it with a little bit higher quality of content. And that's my channel. I just wanted to have a nice little sit down, relaxation video with y'all. So till next time guys.